want to give a brief uh, overview of some of the genetics that we have and what we're doing from a genetic standpoint in our organic herd. So we're here with uh, many different cows uh, sired by many different breeds. So we have Holsteins, uh, purebred Holsteins. We also use two different crossbred rotations. One incorporates Viking Red, Normandy, and Jersey in a more low input, uh, ideal looking for grass fed genetics uh, and A2. We also use Viking Red, Holstein, and Montpelliard in a rotation. And are looking at comparing those cows for milk production, fertility, longevity, and health. We've also been uh, exploring the genomics of these animals. So uh, through a project we've been working with with Penn State University, we have been genotyping all of our animals on this site. So we have genotyped all of our cows as well as our calves. From the calf side, we're using those uh, genomics to look at calf hood diseases from scours to respiratory infections and to see if there's any genes that are signaling those different diseases. We've also been using the genomics to find uh, A2 genetics in our herd. So far we find about 50% of our herd is about A2, A2. So we've been looking at that A2 genetics and to see if there's any difference in the production, uh, fertility, or longevity of the cows that are A2, A2 versus A1 genetics. There's also been an interesting uh, study that we've been involved with from Penn State that had looked at coat color and control of flies. So we found that the cows that have more black uh, on them, the darker colored animals, tend to gain more flies. The animals that have more uh, white and red genetics have less flies on them. So there's some genetics out there looking at the skin color of cows to be able to see which ones reduce the fly population. Because flies in organic uh, herds are be problematic. There's many different ways that we can reduce flies, but we're trying to explore many different methods, and one is genetics to help control uh, the fly population in our organic herd. Uh, for this abstract, I want to discuss a little bit on genetic traits and beta casein A2 of Holstein and crossbred dairy cattle in our University of Minnesota research herd uh, that has an organic and a low input dairy herd. This project is in uh, collaboration with the University of Minnesota and Penn State University looking at uh, crossbreeding and genetics of organic dairy cattle. A quick background on our University of Minnesota dairy herds, so you know where we're coming from. We do have an organic herd uh, grazing during May to October. And in the wintertime, they're housed uh, outdoors in a compost bedded pack barn or outdoor straw pack and fed an organic TMR, corn silage, haylage, uh, and corn and some soybean meal. We also have a low input conventional herd that is very similar. Uh, housed outdoors um, or on pasture, maybe not as quite as much pasture as the uh, organic herd, uh, but they are supplemented year round at varying levels uh, with a TMR. Our two herds, we have about 130 cows in our organic herd, about um, 18 kilos of milk. 4.5% fat, 3.4 protein, and our current uh, milk price, uh, that's 28 US dollars per 100 pounds of milk. Our conventional herd, about 160 cows, a little bit higher production. We feed them, obviously, more TMR, more energy, a uh, little bit less fat and protein, and uh, somatic cell count than the organic herd. But currently, our milk price is uh, much lower. Uh, with the uh, coronavirus happening in the U.S. at this time. And we have used many different dairy breeds uh, for our crossbreeding program in these herds. Uh, so our 
of crossbreeding research at the University of Minnesota really started in 2000 with two research herds. Um, herd in, in St. Paul, campus herd, and then our herd here in Morris. They were all 100% Holstein herds, and we initially started with Jersey. And uh, those Jersey crossbreds uh, were bred to Monte the Yard. And uh, we also bred some Holstein older cows to Monte the Yard AI sires as well. And in 2008, uh, we replaced the Jersey with uh, Swedish red, uh, which has become Viking red. Uh, with the Danish red, Finnish Ayrshire, and the Swedish red breeds. So this is Procross, so what we have been working with the last 15 to 20 years at our research herd. You have Holstein, Viking red, and Montpellier in a rotation. And we also have a Alternative crossbreeding scheme here at our research herd, more for low input, uh, uh, lower TMR, low grain production, um, maybe more grazing herds. Uh, we do have them in both uh, our low input and our organic herd. This involves using a Jersey sire, the Viking red sire, and then Normandy in uh, that crossbred rotation. And over time, with this uh, grazing cross, a high percentage of the herd uh, becomes red. On the left is a Normandy sired cow. In the middle is a Viking red sired cow. And on the right is a Montpellier sired cow in a grazing environment. We also have purebred Holsteins here uh, in our herd. Uh, we maintain about one third uh, Holstein animals uh, in our herd, and we still have a few of the 1964 Holstein genetics in our uh, low input herd here in Morris. So I wanted to compare the uh, 1964 uh, control Holsteins with Procross. Gray's cross crossbreds uh, with Holstein cows uh, for genetic traits and beta 2 uh, uh, beta casein A2 status from genomic testing. And this was part of our larger project of genomic selection and crossbreeding for health in organic dairy cattle. Uh, so, this is just looking at our. Um, University herd and the number of animals that we've genotyped so far. <clears throat> so we initially started uh, the Holsteins and our control 1960 genetics with the uh, Zoetis uh, Clarified Plus and have genotyped um, about 175 cows. We also used the GGP 50K and have Genotyped about 400 crossbreds, 40 Holstein, and 36 1964 with that. And as part of this grant, we were also interested in looking at calfwood diseases and uh, genetic traits for uh, uh, calf health. And so we did uh, a number of genotyping with the GGP 150K SNP chip about 200 crossbreds, 56 Holstein, and uh, 23 1964 genetic animals. So in all, we've uh, genotyped about uh, 900 or so, just shy of 1,000 animals uh, at our research herd, uh, including crossbreds and uh, Holstein cows. So I wanted to look at uh, PTAs uh, from the December 2019 genetic evaluation from the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding. Uh, we looked at A2 status in the genetic line and analyzed them with PROC GLM or SAF. Uh, here are the A2 uh, genotypes uh, for about 800 of those animals uh, that we have. About 50% of our Holstein animals are A2A2. 
Uh, we still have about 14% that are A1, A1. Our 1964 Holstein uh, has a much greater percentage that are A1, A1. Uh, not very many, only about 23% of those are A2, A2. So over time, uh, selection, uh, we have selected for a greater percentage of A2 genetics in Holstein cows. They have Holstein sired crossbreds, about 47% A2. Jersey sired, so Jersey tends to have a hot, little bit higher A2 percentage, so not very many cows are A1, A1 that are Jersey sired crossbred. Won't be the yard sired crossbreds, about 50% are heterozygous A1, A2. Uh, Normandy sired crossbreds, about 55% uh, are A2, A2, and Viking red are about 45%. So across our herd, we have about 43% of the cows are A2, A2. We're still actually 15% uh, are A1, A1, which was much higher than we might have expected. If you look at the, I just looked at net merit and there are many other uh, genetic traits that we could look at uh, between these, but uh, net merit, uh, probably one of the most important. The 1964 Holstein, uh, so there's no difference in A2 genotype between any of these crossbred groups. Uh, the 1964 Holstein are all quite low. Uh, doesn't matter what uh, genotype they are. Uh, Holstein, uh, no difference whether they were A2 or A1. Our Pro Cross crossbreds, uh, no difference again in our Grace Cross crossbreds. So, really, no difference uh, between our genotypes for uh, net merit. In conclusion, uh, within breed groups, the A2, A2 cattle were similar to A1, A1 cattle for net merit. In future studies, we'll compare these genetic lines uh, for the GWAS, uh, for production and health traits and calf foot diseases, um, and, and admixture uh, looking at uh, crossbred genetics. And we thank the uh, Organic Research and Extension uh, initi Initiative of USDA for uh, providing funding for this project. I wanted to give an update on beta casein uh, genetics in organic Holstein dairy cows uh, that we have been uh, studying the last few years. I uh, worked on a collaborative project uh, with the University of Minnesota and, and State. So recently there's been a lot of interest in A2 genetics and because the A2 milk company has uh, been increasing in market share uh, in the United States. It is one of the uh, most increasing sectors of the dairy market. And there recently has been some research studies that have been coming out that uh, have been talking about uh, A1 and A2 casein and their effects on human health. Obviously the jury is still out. Uh, on those, but there will be more recent studies uh, coming out. Uh, so what is uh, A A1 or A2? Uh, if you're not uh, quite familiar, it's uh, one single insertion at position 67, where the A2 is proline and the A1 is histidine. So it is very easy to select with. Uh, because it's a, a single in, insertion. So what does the A2 gene do? It really determines whether you have A1 or A2 protein produced in the cow's milk. Obviously, every uh, animal has uh, two copies of that gene. A2, A2 animals produce A2 milk. A1, A1 animals produce A1 milk, and A1, A2 produce a mixture.
And these are sort of the probabilities to get uh, A1 or A2 combinations. Obviously, if uh, you use uh, homozygous A1 uh, for both the bull and the cow, you're going to get 100% A1A1. Uh, heterozygous um, uh, combinations on both the, the bull and the cow, you get 25% uh, A1, 50% uh, heterozygous and 25% A2A2. So really the, the fastest way to make a genetic selection of this is using A2A2 bulls. So we uh, looked at the A2 genetics of uh, organic dairy cows and uh, through this project, a USDA funded project, we uh, were able to genotype uh, cows with uh, clarified plus and we uh, included the A2 uh, genotypes uh, in that uh, from genomic testing. These are some of the other uh, all of the, the breeds so far that we have uh, genomic tested and they're uh, either A1 or A2 status. Uh, we We've done some Ayrshire and some Brown Swiss uh, cows, very few numbers, Guernsey, uh, 10 genotypes there, almost all of them were A2A2. We've got about 1,300 uh, organic uh, Holstein cows, 12% uh, are A1A1, and about 45% of those cows were A2A2, which is what we kind of see around for uh, a lot of averages in, in many of the studies where people have genotyped for A2. 93 Jersey cows, 44% uh, were A2A2, a few milking shorthorn uh, animals. Most of those were uh, A1, A2. Uh, there were some other cows uh, that we uh, genotyped, uh, some crossbreds, uh, Montpellier, Norwegian red, Swedish red, Normandy. And uh, there were uh, some unknown cows, and about 50% of those unknown cows were uh, A2A2. So really we're, uh, over this population of cows that we've genotyped, we've got about 40 to 50% of the animals that are A2A2. And this, uh, so we, we looked at a Holstein cow study of uh, organic Holstein cows on pasture. And we really wanted to determine the milk fat and protein production and somatic cell score for beta casein A2 genotypes of these organic Holstein cows. So from this data set, we had uh, 637 Holstein cows uh, from uh, seven organic herds that were on DHIA. And these cows were uh, genotyped with uh, the clarified plus with A2. And we also acquired dairy wellness uh, profit uh, values and dairy wellness trait values from these cows. We used actual 305 day milk fat and protein production and somatic cell count from best prediction. And in our statistical model, we included uh, the effects of parity, herd, and casein genotype, and cow and birth date of the cow were random effects. So out of these uh, 600 cows that had uh, completed uh, production records, these are their uh, genotypes. About 6% of the cows were A1A1, 44% of the cows were A1A2, and 50% of the cows were A2A2. So these are the results for A2 milk and uh, production. We did not see any difference in uh, production of milk fat or protein uh, based on the casein genotypes of those cows. Production was uh, very similar uh, across all of the, the casein genotypes. And there was no difference in, in somatic cell count either. However, we looked at the Casein genotypes and PTAs of those cows from the December 2019 genetic evaluation from the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding. 
and the cows that were A2, A2 had a higher net merit, about 60 more dollars lifetime net merit than those cows that were A1, A1. We also looked at the grazing merit, uh, since these were, were grazing cows, about $80 more net grazing merit if they were A2, A2 genotype than A1, A1. The cows that were A2 had higher milk PTAs as well as higher protein PTAs. There was a slight difference in uh, increased productive life for those cows that had A2 genotypes, but no difference in dairy wellness profit, whether for uh, uh, the casein genotype. We looked at the wellness traits for those cows. Uh, we didn't find any difference uh, for the dairy wellness traits uh, for health whether they were A1, A1, or A2, A2. There was also no difference in the wellness index uh, from Zoetis for these cows, whether they were A1, A1, or A2, A2. So in the end, we should test our cows if we really want to know what the A2 percentage is in a herd. I think a lot of people think that it's probably much uh, lower than what they actually expect it to be in their herd. If people are looking at uh, selecting A2 genetics, obviously you want to select the top A2, A2 bulls, select the top net merit bulls, and then uh, select A2 as a sort of as a, a benefit of sire selection instead of using it as the only criterion uh, for sire selection. And really in the end, I think we have to have an A2 uh, um, premium uh, to get paid for this uh, in the marketplace. And we certainly acknowledge the Organic Ag Research and Extension Initiative of USDA for providing funding for the study. Thank you.